know you're in Charlotte when you got Cabela's, bro. We should just skip the game and go to Scarewinds. <laughs> <laughs> I love Scarewinds, dude. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? This is Road Team Reviews, and we're back again for another beautiful college football Saturday. I guess you could say this is peak football season right here. Nate, uh, you promised that we were going to go to a, a big game soon. Finally delivering that promise. It's going to be a great day. So this is going to be our second ACC game of the year. I think uh, the stadium has been a trending topic for the past couple of years. This year specifically has been a very popular stadium. Uh, it's been on social media a lot lately. Last year, I mean, a lot of teams didn't have fans. I'd say Lane Stadium really, one of the ones that really it hurt the most just because they have a pretty ruckus crowd. They have one of the best entrances in college football by far. Arguably the best. So yeah, first week, opening Saturday, they played UNC. It was the first time they were back to their full capacity and they played the great inter sandman as they always do but for some reason like this clip like, really caught on like got everyone hyped i think just to see a full stadium again it was just a way of saying college football is back yeah for a 330 game that was uh that was really impressive speaking of 330 games we are currently on the way to the virginia tech pittsburgh game it has potential to be very electric still they played Notre Dame the week prior, which was a very intense game all the way down to the wire. I think this game yeah. specifically, this is going to be a pivotal ACC matchup. Well, this is for first place in the Coastal Division, right? We were really hoping Virginia Tech would pull off the upset last week against Notre Dame. That probably would have gotten them ranked going into this game, but I still think that the Hokies are going to show out. It's going to be a good time. Regardless of them losing last week, I think they're going to come in with a new energy and I look forward to it. I think it's gonna be a good matchup. Pittsburgh, they got a good old Kenny Pickett. If you haven't heard of Kenny Pickett, the guy is the real deal. He has thrown right now for over 1,700 yards, 19 touchdowns, and just one interception. He's definitely on the Heisman list for sure. Not only will we be seeing one of the greatest entrances, but we'll be seeing one of the top players in the nation play today. So, a lot to be excited about. Do a little score prediction. Yeah, so me personally, I just know that this Pitt offense puts up a lot of points behind Kenny Pickett's. They sling the ball around. No, I think this game just favors Pitt in every way. I'm going to predict a Pitt victory 31 to 20. I think it's going to be a pretty high scoring game, 30 plus for Pitt, but uh, I'm going to give it to the home field advantage. I think Pittsburgh might have the better offense, but I think Virginia Tech and their fans are going to show out once again. I think it's going to be 35 to 31. This could be the first game where we actually see the crowd play a part in the game. Yeah, until then, we'll see you at the game. Lane Stadium, here we come. Stone from the quarry in Virginia. Everything looks like this. Every single building. <laughs> for the a lot of universities and colleges up in the mountains don't have aren't air conditioned. They have all kind of fans.
Virginia Tech people on that way section and then all the way over there it's a little bit of Pittsburgh fans the, the marching band all the way in that little corner so after the first quarter every game I do the hokey pokey yes sir come on Bobby They don't lack on speaker systems around here. Hey! Graduate school right there. Oh, wow. And I feel like we've definitely reached a different part of campus because everything is brick now. All right, just reached the end of the game. Definitely not the outcome we wanted. Regardless, had a great time. Beautiful stadium, beautiful atmosphere. Can't complain. Would I go again? 10 out of 10, yes. 28 to seven, final score though. Yeah, so we took another L with the road team reviews record, but maybe next time we'll pick the dub. <laughs> All right, we'll see you during the review. Hello all, we're back. And we got our hokey decoration to your, your left, Tristan, right by your head. There we go. Go gobblers, baby. That one's dead. Well, that kind of summarizes Virginia Tech's performance because they played pretty lifeless out there. 28 to seven loss. Uh, sorry, Fuente, hope you do good in the future. But yeah, uh, Kenny Pickett and the Panthers were a little too explosive for him, and yeah. uh, Virginia Tech's offense just couldn't get much going. Pitt's offense is going to keep rolling throughout the rest of the season. I'm very nervous as a Clemson fan to see what they do to us. Let's get into it. Let's do it. Up with the uh, structure. You know, this is definitely not even close, like the best venue we've been to so far. You know, it's very similar to Wake Forest two sides no different levels just one solid structure to both sides like you said there's no two levels or anything but it's very steep especially the away section because the home section is a little shorter but it has the press box on top the press box really cool. yeah it, it goes all the way the full it pretty much length of the grandstand it has like two castle like two fort kind of towers on either end of the midsection of it it's kind of weird it's like feels a little disjointed on the end zones they don't connect they leave little gaps in the corners but you kind of made a good point you're saying like it kind of breaks it up to where you can actually see outside the stadium the thing about the stadium is that it's just the stands are so tall it's like leveled up with the trees basically so those corners kind of do give like a lead way to like you know just a little bit of scenery out there that you can look yeah. out of so there's no like bowl around this it's just like there four different sections but the student section i think this was put in in 2006 yeah they call it the jump zone but i don't think it's for the best reasons because i think it's i think it's just because it's aluminum and the thing literally jumps yeah it's like a piece of ucs bounce house they cut that in the put it in the end put zone in there yeah it was it was interesting a little bit after halftime i went up walked around the stadium a little bit and one thing about virginia tech is they have a really good sound system but the con of that is that the student section with the aluminum base it just rattles the whole entire student section <laughs> it just sounded like a subwoofer inside of a car just roaming around the street the whole time <laughs> that, yeah. it was just weird because like you know the rest of the stadium was built off of that you know that trademark hokey stone good foundation and then the student 
hidden section just kind of looked like you said it was just kind of just added there yeah the the hokey stone they sprinkle it around and uh that's like what they're known for or one of the things they're known for and it looks nice too because no one has really like the stone or a granite kind of feel to it it's it's its own thing yeah and i think it's pretty cool i think it's from a quarry just a long history of that and not only it's it was, it's on the stadium but it's also around campus and yeah every single building great scoreboard you know i think them being a tech school i mean you got to focus it's, and have some cool graphics that's kind of um, expected one thing i will say that as far as the aesthetic it's kind of the the bottom of the stands it's just kind of a very plain gray concrete maybe it might overdo it but i think they should have just stoned the whole, stone thing. the whole bottom of yeah. it that would look really cool yeah i think we went into structure enough yeah any so structure we're just a point apart i gave it an 87 and my final score for the stadium structure is going to be an 88 that's our highest yeah. for stadium structure for any team yeah. so yeah. uh atmosphere virginia tech is very well known for a high energy atmosphere as you can see in the past couple years it's been a trending topic with the one and only inner sandman I had a little rock metal phase in my life and <laughs> this was just truly a bucket list check off thing to do with your life you ever want to do this yeah. before you die please do it before the intro and before inner sandman there's just a ton of stuff going around the stadium whether it's tailgating cadets being around the stadium they have the the hokey walk before the games which is like a traditional thing for a lot of schools mm -hmm. but and then they had this little event outside of the stadium kind of like a like a carnival-esque type of thing it was also their homecoming yeah and not only was it the homecoming but it was one of their maroon effect games so virginia tech likes to do specific color themes for certain games uh they usually do an orange effect a maroon effect and a whiteout and so i guess we could we were very fortunate to be a part of yeah. the maroon effect i didn't know about it i just had this shirt it's hey. the closest thing i had to virginia tech colors yeah i think it was really cool before the game before the intro they started playing uh what was it god's gonna cut you down the johnny cash cover yeah so before enter sam man they started building up with another song and then the moment after that you could just hear the instrumental slowly fading in and then you just feel this aura around you my thoughts on it yeah it was great lived up to everything that i had envisioned in my head you can't not like help but jump and sing when that's going on just, no matter the outcome of the game like this atmosphere has yeah. been solidified there's just 65,000 other people in union mm -hmm. for this one part of the game it's beautiful they had a good chance a lot of teams do the spell out chance like it, it just sounded good how they say pokies at the end of it yeah a lot of teams uh jingle their keys now but this was like back in the 60s or 70s so they've been yeah. doing it for a while and it's their key play to the games literally for, the key play. yeah I, I did it a few times yeah your contributions <laughs> are definitely yeah. appreciated yeah they were just loud i mean they only scored once it was in the end of the third quarter a lot of people had left but they scored and it still sounded like this was a competitive game oh like, yeah they kept this crowd engaged throughout all four quarters no matter how bad the outcome of the game like, was the fans that were still there were still loud. I feel like Virginia Tech's always had a great rep for their fans. I feel like just their name, like Pokies. Yeah. Like that's a just sounds like a crazy person, <laughs> you know. Even though it's a turkey, it's just like a bunch of Hokies. They met expectations for me, which were pretty high. So we still graded it for what we saw at their full potential in the game, and um, I gave it a 92, which is an A minus. That is by far the highest atmosphere that we've given so. and my final score for the atmosphere is going to be the highest grade i've given besides field design on the on coastal this final grade is going to be a 95 you met expectations and you lived up to the hype now the scenic value we've alluded to a few pieces here and there so what i really liked is that in one of them over by the student sections they just had like a nice kind of really nice landscapes some nice planted trees good greenery over there it had like a nice earthy look to this just kind of big yeah. concrete stone stadium where we were sitting they had cedar trees which i've on, i've seen on tv that looks really nice 
because they run out right there. So it's like you got the uh, stone entrance and the smoke and then these cedar trees that they run out. Oh, yeah. And it just looks like a nice area. They're not quite sycamore trees, but uh, I like those little corners off the end zone. I think it was definitely a good little addition, well, subtraction of the stadium. It was nice. It looked like it was a part of Virginia. You know, when you drive through Virginia, you're, you're at a pretty high elevation area, lots of mountains. It just felt cool to be in the atmosphere and still feel a part of that. The stadium is kind of down in like a gully, so it's cool that you can see the big field house in the background. Yeah. It's neat that you can see it from the stadium. Probably the first stadium where there was actually like somewhat of a scenic value oh, to the stadium. But um, yeah, overall, nothing crazy, but there was something there, which a lot more than some of the other places. So yeah, we both gave it the same score. We gave it an 85. So we got a double B85 for the scenic value. Here's a category that Virginia Tech definitely has no shortage of, and that is history and tradition. If you're wondering what Lane Stadium is named after, it was named after Edward Lane, who founded the Lane Company, which was a cedar chest company in the early 60s. Used the cedar wood from cedar trees, cedar woods, they built like chess boxes, kind of whatever with, and furniture. We speculated maybe that's why they have the cedar trees along the uh, tunnel they run out of. I don't know, we didn't do too much investigating. <laughs> and then there's just the overall historical nature of the Virginia Tech program. Oh, yeah. Like the greats, like Mike Vick, Frank Beamer, Bruce Smith, Bruce Arians. I mean, dude, um, there's so many NFL the great legends. Bud Foster, defensive genius. Something about Virginia Tech just like attracts greatness and legacy. For a team that, a, a school that has never won, Virginia Tech is one of two power five schools. They've never won a national championship in any sport. Nope. Only them and Kansas State, the only two schools, are a school that has never won a national championship. So much greatness in their alumni and former players. They do a cool thing with Frank Beamer's number 25. I don't know if it's retired or if they have a player each week wear 25. So, I don't know, it's just cool. They respect those, uh, those legends as they should. Uh, as far as kind of dances, activities, things they do. We, we thought Coastal was like a big partying stadium. Virginia Tech kind of took that to the next level. Virginia Tech feels like a reunion. It really did feel like just meeting up with friends and seeing a while and then these long lasting traditions, whether it's the hokey walk going in to start the game, like between each quarter and start each quarter, they do some kind of weird outlandish thing. Like they did the, the hokey pokey to start the third quarter, like the marching band, which is great because they're the oh, hokies. Yeah. They played Shout and made a nice, a really funny the video quarter. compilation. I don't know, it made light of a dark situation for them getting beat down. Their hokey mascot does push-ups after every score. She didn't have to do many this game. Also, but. they have a very famous canna that they fire pre-game and then after every score. And it's called Skipper. The reason why they call it Skipper because it was actually named after John F. Kennedy. That was like right after yep. he was assassinated, but apparently that was one of his nicknames. Yeah, and then just the overall like the hokey stone, Inner Sandman. They haven't started doing Inner Sandman until like early 2000s thousands they really took advantage of that over the past like two decades and it's just become one of the most famous things in college football hasn't really been the longest or it's not the oldest tradition but you know it's here to stay and it's a really awesome one yeah. aside from inner sandman like yeah i was about to say i didn't know any of, i didn't know about yeah. any of those traditions until i went to the game some are cool some are kind of like you have to be i feel a diehard pokey fan to appreciate them but i mean that's kind of any school after all that, got some pretty good grades, you know. I gave them a 93. And my final grade for history and tradition is going to be a 94, which is an A. All right, and I think this is the category I'm most excited to talk about because for the first time this season, we finally found a stadium that has real, real live grass. grass. I think they have a cool logo. It look nice on the field. They had the ACC logo. They had cool 25 yard line markers. And it was like a badge in honor yeah. of Frank Beamer. And it's 
their drive for 25. It's uh, it's cool. I like when teams do that, like just have little markers that not every other team has, kind of things that are different, things that mean something to them. Mm -hmm. They can incorporate on their field and make it look natural. Virginia Tech did a good job with that. It's really not much more you can ask for in a field. It has all the logos and everything you can ask for, but the only thing I can say, maybe it's just me personally, but I like end zones filled in. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't bad or anything, but yeah. That's just something that will take a little bit of points off for me. Um, I like yeah. the fonts on the field. It was kind of like a just a tech type of font on it. They have their little banners across the corner of the field where you could see like their ACC championships. The field was like, it was just like really close to the fans too. So like if like home field advantage really comes into play with this field. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree to the point on the negative space in the end zone. And I feel like just colored in with something. So if it's like orange or white, I think would have been awesome. Would have probably bumped it up to an A plus. But for me, it's gonna stay in the A minus range, which is still the highest, my highest field design grade and uh so yeah 91 that's an a minus listen guys i know you watched the previous video on coastal carolina and you're probably going to crucify me for this and you're probably going to be like tristan why why are you grading this higher than one of the only colored turfs in college football simply because uh yeah. it has real grass i mean i get it you can't color turf like that with real grass without it lasting a long time but at the end of the day man this is this <laughs> is a real college football field there's just not too much that not too much more that you can ask for in a field and because of that i'm going to give it a 93. So Virginia Tech, you now have officially the highest grade for me on field design. We are at the conclusion of this grading. After calculating everything up, my final grade for Lane Stadium came out to be an 89.2, which is a B plus. And my final overall score is going to be a 90.6. Stadium definitely got the highest individual grades from us. Averaging those two uh, together, it ended up being an 89.9, which is B plus. But, but you of know, course, with every single stadium that we have been to so far, which is not a surprise or a shocker. I, okay, when I was in line getting beer, this is the most poorly placed beer concession stand <laughs> I have ever seen. There is a main entrance that you walk into. Like, just think of like any typical, like you get your like scan to go in, you see your tickets and it's like three different lanes you walk through. They put a beer stand right in front of that main entrance. So you got people coming into the stadium. Then you got people waiting in line while you also have the yeah, main yeah. flow. I've seen that. Of you, have people. To, you have to cut right through them. Oh my! Yeah. It was so. It was terrible. It's the worst line I've ever sat in <laughs> for beer. I almost want to take a point away, <laughs> but just to stay consistent, we're gonna give them your plus one. I guess so. Sorry, I got a little heated there. After that, it came out to be a 90.9, which is an A minus. And yeah, the first day goes to Lane Stadium. Yes, sir. Uh, it was a great time. Very cool stadium. Glad to say that I've seen a game here, seen Sandman. Overall, this was just a great experience. This was a great time. If you want to check something off your bucket list, please go to this stadium. And don't go just for Enter Sandman. Like, go yeah. for everything else that goes on with this college football experience. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get there hours early, experience all the different things going on like Hokey Walk or Hokey Village or just like walking around campus like please take the time to do that because I mean this is a true college football town. Adding this stadium around campus was just a perfect location for it and you know everyone inside of this stadium just really enjoyed their time regardless of the 28 to 7 beatdown and they were very engaged the whole time. Everyone was in good spirits. This is how football should be. So we have finally found a stadium with real grass. I yep. guess our next thing is to find a stadium that doesn't serve beer. Yep. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see more content, please like, subscribe to this channel, turn on those post notifications so we can continue to grow and create more content for you guys. Uh, comment below like what your favorite tradition that you've ever seen is. And what did y'all think about our overall grade? Was it overrated, underrated, or properly rated? Just let us know. Again, guys, we don't know where we're going next week, but please continue this journey. And uh, as always, we'll see you next week on game day and on the road. This is Road Team Reviews, and we're out.